So this is the Effigy Ego smart socket. It's a Wi-Fi enabled timer remote socket thing for a little bit of home automation. Um, I work quite long hours so it's quite handy for turning heaters on, turning cookers on, all that kind of stuff. Whilst you're at work so you can come home to whatever you want. Um, costs around $60 New Zealand. Um, one button off on action uh, plus a smartphone app for actually controlling setting timers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is how you set it up. So first off you plug your socket in and you'll see the power button you'll see it, the uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi button flashing rapidly so that's it in the setup mode and you have to come over to your phone if I remember where Play Store is find the Ego FPG app whatever it's called, FPG Ego Install that. Two point two seven megabytes. Now I've been using the socket for a month or so, and it certainly wasn't a simple, straightforward install first time around. Uh, the problem is you've got just a single button on there. There's no web interface. It's kind of reliant on the app for all the setup. Uh, I had a few issues getting it to to be usable from outside of the local network. Um, but hopefully, this time around it should go okay. So once you install the app, you go into it, it picks up your, your local wireless network. I'll put in the password. I'll just do that over here because it's um, my password. Click on connect, and it kind of does whatever it needs to to try and connect to your device. Now, I've never managed to get this method to work to connect my socket. So, as you see at the bottom, says if this connection fails, please use AP connection. So, we'll give up and do that. You click on AP. So, if your connection is fail, you can still use this. So then you go back to your socket and you have to put it into the local mode by holding down this for three seconds until we get a much slower flash. I don't know if that will show on the camera. And then we can press OK. Your phone will find the Effigy Prof network, which is the kind of P2P network this sets up. It does whatever it needs to connect. Go back to the app. So once you've connected to the ad hoc network, it should then prompt you with a list of local available wireless networks. This is our one here. And it will remember your password from last time around. I'll press OK. So chosen your list of appliances, you can have as many as you want, or it can be up to 20, something like that. So click on Setup Required. You can choose an icon for what you want to be connecting it to, or call this a, a lamp, because that's what we're going to play with. You can change the name, call it a lamp, location, table. 
MAC address. That's the only diagnostics you can ever see is just your MAC address of the device if you're looking for the DHCP logs. You can update the firmware from here. We're already up to date. Version 28. Maybe by version 70 or so it might be working. So socket defaults to off. To turn it on, press off and on. Yeah, network connection failure. Who would have thought it? Why is that happening? Well, we connect it to my network, which is right. There we go. So it just takes some time. So you can turn it off and on with the switch. Let's bring in the lamp. Plug it into our socket. So it's now switched on over here. If we turn it on here, we can turn our lamp off and on. Now the issue I had initially was I couldn't you uh, connect via 3G to uh, control this, so if I just turn my Wi-Fi off, so I'm now kept connecting to connected to the mobile data. Okay, that's working on. I'll come and turn Wi-Fi back on. So if you look into the settings of this device, it shows you how much power it uses, how much power it's used in a 24 hour period, and you can put in some, some figures so you can work out cost and all that kind of stuff. It shows you history over whatever time period you want. Timer, you can add some timers. I have a scheduled timer, a random timer, so turn the lights off and on when you're out to make it look like you're home. Or a countdown timer so you can get it to turn off after a set period. Uh, again, I had a few issues testing the countdown timers. If I set one now, see what happens. Uh, timer. Add a timer, schedule. Oh no, we'll, we'll do a countdown timer. Well, turn it on first. On. Go into the device. <coughs> timer, add timer, countdown timer. Set it for a minute. Save and exit. That should be going. Uh, what else have we got? It can also um, do something. Not quite sure what. It can learn the standby power of the device. So it can. If you leave your TV in standby, it will kind of learn how much current it draws and after a set period of time it will reduce that to zero. Not quite sure how it manages the uh, turning back on. Again, not a lot of instruction, not a lot of technical help with these. Uh, but it's providing this. And the app's a bit terrible. You can see it kind of... If you exit out too quickly, to try and go back in, it has a tendency to uh, crash. You just have to go into apps and, and force a stop and get it going again. Usual. Turn it off and on. got a timer there. There we go, timer worked. First time I've had that work. Most of the time it just gets to the end of the countdown and it doesn't do anything. But uh, yeah, hopefully that'll get fixed in firmware. And as I say, you've also got a ma manual override on the on the switch there. Yeah, so I'm not, not too sure if I'll keep going with these ones or look for something different. Certainly if they iron out the bugs it might be quite a useful solution, but yeah, it's quite buggy. Not a lot of diagnostics, not a lot of support from effigy. But yeah, it's a tidy compact little unit. I thought, well, I paid 
just under $60 I think, which um, might probably paid a little bit less with her. But um, yeah, it's kind of not too horrendously expensive if you can get it working. I could after some hassle. Uh, you might not be so lucky. Um, Shout up to you, FG Ego Socket. Eventually it does pretty much what it's supposed to. But yeah, not for your amateur.